Good morning, Pastor Ray here with The Daily Bread. Today is Wednesday, and God is faithful. And so uh, the book of Acts chapter 22, we're working through it. Today, verses 17 through 21. And uh, Paul is going to talk about his encounter with Jesus. And it reminds me of the story found in the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 6. So I'm going to reference that. But uh, let's read it and, and see what we can learn. And so it says this in verse 17. Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I was in a trance and saw him, that's Jesus, saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprison and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And so uh, we'll stop right there because then it gets crazy. Uh, it gets intense and Paul is bold and he's uh, standing firm. But look, at he's talking about his encounter with Jesus, right? And so Jesus meets with him and he's going to tell him what he uh, to, to go to the Gentiles. And this is crazy. And so he's going to go and he's going to have a ministry for God. But look at the first thing that happens to Paul. Paul brings up his own sin, right? Paul, right? And so... Uh, it's not always the devil that throws our sin in our face, right? Sometimes, you know, we have a conscience and we know who we are. Like, you know, come on, you know, you, like we always say, you know, you have to get to do real talk. You have to be honest, like, like, you, you know, where you're from, you remember where you're from, where you came from. I, I remember the sin that God brought me out of and, and it's like, God didn't use me. I know where I'm from, know what I'm done. And, and, and yet here he gives this reason. It's almost like Moses, right? Moses coming up with an excuse and uh, I, I don't speak well. And God just pushes it to the side because why? It's like we talked yesterday, a chosen vessel. And, and, and I like this right here because Jesus doesn't even mention his sin. Why? Because the blood, the blood of Jesus, right? Come on. The blood cleanses from our sin. And, and so I want to reference in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verse 5, the, the um, prophet is having a vision of God's temple in the heavenlies. And in verse 5, it says, So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. And I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. Amen. And so God comes and he does this cleansing. Why? Because this man is chosen to be a prophet. He's chosen to be God's vessel. And, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, it was usually a few. But in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, you know, it says that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. So everyone, God wants to use everyone. And while pastor, you know where I come from or where I've done, no. Does God cleanse you? Do you believe that? The blood of Jesus washes away your sins? I mean, come on, right? We got to believe. Now, if we... <clears throat> and so God gives him this commission. How about us today? How many times does God reach down into our hearts and into our lives and stir us, right? Come on. And, and, and maybe, maybe it's, you know, just something like... Maybe, maybe, maybe we're backslidden and God's like, you know what, come on, let's get back to it. Maybe, maybe our prayer life is, is dwindling down, you know. Not everybody's going to be an apostle or a pastor or a preacher, and I'm not asking that. But what I am saying is, you know, are we following what God is doing in our hearts, right? Come on, honestly. All the movements that God does, the proddings and the pushings, and I know for a fact God speaks to people more than they would ever admit he moves them, draws them, pulls upon them because he has a purpose and a plan for everyone. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your life. Don't let the devil lie to you. 
Don't be discouraged. Don't give in to that type of spirit and, and you know, life is not worth living and how it's so common today. Uh, you know, just people wanting to commit suicide or people are just going crazy. No, 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 none of that. God has a purpose and a plan. And he saved you for a reason. Amen. So let's continue pressing in and see what God does. Let's believe the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen.